Session of the Holy Eucharist on this, the 25th Sunday in the Pentecost season. We begin with the words of the grace on page 185, which draw us together into this body of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from 1 Samuel. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife, Panina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely, to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth, Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have, not, I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house of Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Exalts in 
the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies, because I rejoice in your salvation. There is no holy one like you, O Lord, nor any rock like you are God. For you are a God of knowledge, and by you your actions are weighed. My heart exalts in the Lord, I rejoice in your salvation. The bowels of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full now search bread, but those who were hungry are well fed. The barren woman has born sevenfold, but she who has many children is forlorn. Both the poor and the rich are of your making, you bring low and you also exalt. My heart exalts in the Lord. I rejoice in your salvation. You raise up the poor from the dust and lift the knee from the ash heap. You make them sit with the rulers and inherit a place of honor. For the pillars of the earth are yours, and on them you have set the world. My heart exalts in the day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool at for his feet. For, my, for by a single offering he has perfected all time those who sat sanctified. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean with the evil conscience of our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is faithful and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching the word of the lord thanks be to god <laughs> According to Mark. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, You see these great buildings? 
Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be, birth, there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Will you be seated, please? I want to welcome with us this morning Peter Mentis, who is the campaign manager for FaithWorks, who is going to come and share with us this morning. Peter, welcome and come on up. As opposed to come on down. May I speak with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Again, my name is Peter Mentis. Good morning. I am a campaign manager for Faith Works, an outreach program of our diocese. Thank you for having me here uh, this morning. It was a, a nice ride up from the city where I live, um, though I just saw my first snow this morning. I had to come to Orangeville. This is not down in the city. The mission of Faith Works is to bring to life the words of Jesus. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Jesus offers us these words, as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, as part of a prophetic image of the beginning of his reign. This image even explains to us how we may participate in God's kingdom, in the here and now, as well as in our future. I was hungry and you gave me food, he says. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? When I'm hungry, I go to the cupboard, take something out, and eat away. Or open the fridge and put something in the microwave, and there it is. A baby cries, and all the caregivers rush right away to make sure there's food. Or perhaps the diaper needs to be changed. It sounds so simple, right? I was naked, and you clothed me. The cooler weather, as I mentioned, is here, and winter is coming. As I leave the door, I will reach for my coat in the closet and put it on to stay warm while I'm outside. The child is sent off to school, and his caregivers make sure that the ch it is wearing a snowsuit with boots, toque, mittens, a scarf, of course. It sounds simple. Or is it? Is it that simple for everyone? Can everyone reach into their cupboard and find food? Does everyone have a coat for the winter or boots? Are children properly clothed and fed, sheltered and loved? We know the sad answer is no. It isn't as simple as it may seem. Sometimes we have made bad decisions. More often than not, circumstances beyond our control can make life more difficult our upbringing, our lack of opportunities, abuse or neglect, or crisis like the pandemic. Human indifference and selfishness, fear and greed complicate things even more. Some end up with so much, and some end up with nothing at all. 
Sharing is difficult. It is a struggle to let go and let God. We doubt that God will provide. So we must hold on to what we have. And we're afraid to share with others. Regardless of the causes of economic injustice that lead to poverty and so many other social ills, we are offered a solution by the one who is the solution, our Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us to love one's neighbor as oneself. Whoever has two coats must share with someone who has none. Whoever has food must do likewise. In the prophetic image of the beginning of his reign I spoke of earlier, Jesus tells us, as you did it to one of the least of these members of my family, you did it to me. As you did it to one of the least of these members of my family, you did it to me. This, I believe, is a powerful statement. It's revolutionary. We are told that how we treat other human beings, even the least, whatever that means, is how we treat Christ, the King, without qualification or prejudice. In this statement, in this vision of God's kingdom, Christ identifies totally with each and every one of us, especially those who suffer, as he would upon the cross. How we look at another person is how we look at him. This means that if we are searching for Jesus, we can see him in the face of our neighbor, or even a stranger. If we wish to be with Jesus, we can find him in the person living on the street or in isolation at home. If we wish to help Jesus with his mission on earth, we can by sharing of ourselves with those who struggle as he did for us. He says this because he knows that each and every person the haves and the have-nots, are created in the image of God, as we read in Genesis. Each and every person is a living image of God walking among us, as Christ walked among us 2,000 years ago. We may be beaten up and bruised, exhausted or malnourished, isolated or afraid, but Christ is still in each and every one of us. And there is where we find Jesus and can help him as he helped and saved us. Once we see Jesus in every human being, I believe sharing becomes simple. It may not be easy, but the vision is simple. Is this not why Jesus appeared as a baby? Is this not the significance of the incarnation of Christ? Is this not what we will soon be celebrating? at Christmas, that we may share with others as God has shared his love with us in Jesus. Having said this, I must confess, I struggle to share. Lord have mercy. I believe. Help my unbelief. There are many opportunities to heed this calling of the Lord and see the face of Jesus in the face of each person around us. Many are struggling, hurting, isolated today. The need is great. The opportunities to help are everywhere. I'm with you today to remind you of one such opportunity, FaithWorks. It is a program of our diocese that allows us to be more than the sum of our parts when we all work together. When we work together, we can do more to heal the divisions, bridge the gaps that fragment people, families, communities. FaithWorks reaches out to the homeless and those in need. It reaches out to newcomers and refugees. It reaches out to at-risk women, children, and youth. 
It reaches out to indigenous peoples and to those impacted by HIV AIDS. It provides food and shelter, guidance and direction, support and comfort through various ministries connected with the Anglican Church. These ministries are located throughout the diocese, in Peterborough, at One Roof Community Centre, offering food, and at One City Peterborough, offering shelter and reintegration for men coming out of the prison system. In Arulia, at Kuchichin Jubilee House, and at the Arulia Christian Centre, the Lighthouse, shelters for women suffering abuse. In Barry, at the Samaritan House, all offering support, shelter, and food. In Newmarket, at In From The Cold, at, in Durham, at North House, again offering support, food, and shelter. In Peel, at the Dam, offering youth centers in Cooksville and Meadowvale. And in Toronto, at the Toronto Urban Native Ministry, Anglican United Refugee Alliance, Philip Aziz Hospice for HIV AIDS, Flemington Park Ministry, and your All Saints Church Community Centre down in Dundas and Sherburne, such a difficult neighbourhood, all offering food, support, shelter, and community as they are able. In 2020, across the diocese, almost 13,000 people were fed, sheltered, nurtured, supported, and befriended. I urge you to visit the FaithWorks website, faithworks.ca, to read more and watch the various videos we have there about our mission and our work. Last year presented exceptional challenges brought on by the pandemic. It also brought forth exceptional generosity. FaithWorks raised over $1.6 million in support of our ministry partners. It allowed us to offer extra assistance to these ministry partners who, on the front lines, carried extra burdens, extra expenses, brought on by the pandemic. This year's challenge for FaithWorks is to raise $1.5 million across the diocese to maintain and improve our level, our level of assistance to these ministry partners during these ongoing difficult times. We are excited to have been offered a matching challenge grant of up to $100,000 for increased donations by parishes and individuals. In other words, for every increased dollar a parish or individual contributes this year to FaithWorks, over last year's amount, this generous donor will match that dollar, up to $100,000. For every additional dollar we raise, it's $2 for our ministry partners. Let's not let this opportunity pass us by. In 2021, we have celebrated the 25th anniversary of FaithWorks. To give greater meaning to the anniversary celebration, Bishop Andrew offered us a 100 plus 1 percent challenge. He has asked that all, 100 percent of Anglican, Anglican parishes and people, contribute to this year's FaithWorks campaign and the contributions be 1% more than last year's. This would produce an exceptional result that would allow FaithWorks to offer exceptional assistance to the most vulnerable among us during these exceptionally difficult times. Now that would be something to celebrate in this anniversary year. COVID-19 has impacted all of us. We also need to think of those who continue to live in even greater isolation and depression every day, with even greater economic and social instability and hardship every day, even greater illness and anxiety than this pandemic has brought us every day. We can help a little more, maybe 1% more, out of our love for Jesus, because we see Jesus in the face of all those around us, we can help. How can we help? You can help by being part of this challenge and the solution. How can you help better respond to the Lord's calling? To help those most in need? You can make a donation to FaithWorks through your parish, St. John's. 
15% of the donation will remain here in the parish for your own local outreach programs. You can make a donation online at our website. Again, 15% of that donation can remain here in this parish for local outreach if you follow the instructions in the website. You can join the committee here at St. John's to volunteer and help with faith works or other programming and outreach. And of course, next Sunday, we are celebrating Faith Work Sunday, the Sunday of the reign of Christ. It is a special day across our diocese to remember the works of faith works and those we help. I believe Christ has made things simple, but not easy. Let us open our hearts and see Jesus in the face of those all around us. Let us help as we can, each of us, and share with those in need around us, and so show our love for Jesus. Faith Works gives us an opportunity to act out of love for others in response to God's love for us. Faith Works allows us as Anglicans to work together in generosity and trust and share God's abundant love with those most in need. Amen. As we think on God's presence with us in Peter's words, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayers today are on page 114, prayer number five. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church and the Worldwide Anglican Communion. We pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. <clears throat> Primate, the Most Reverend Jeffrey Smith. In the Diocesan Prayer Cycle, we pray for York Centre, Central Deanery. In our parish, we pray today for Glennis McGregor, Carol McLean. Kim and Ralph McTavish, and Dorothy Murphy. We pray for Trillium Mono, St. Mark's Orangeville, Randall Shea, and Santa Maria School. We pray for the world, for the people of Afghanistan, especially women and girls, for all victims of violence, for the people who continue to be affected by the volcanic eruption on La Palma. For truth and reconciliation. For a stable government in Haiti. And for the missionaries and their families who were kidnapped. For all refugees and asylum seekers. For the new Canadian Parliament for the Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. <clears throat> Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them 
to serve this people according to his holy will. Oh, Let us hear our prayer. We pray for our bishops. We pray for our priests, Elizabeth and Penny. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. Bishop Tom Corsten, Bishop Michael Paulison, Shirley Barnes, Bill, Hilary Brinton, Margaret Deves, Ada Shea Paris, Anthony Ketchum, Debbie White, Christopher Franken, Charles Well, Ted Lorriman, John Fancet, Peter Rhodes, Harry French, Derek Jaworski, Virginia Nihil, Audrey Lees, Ron Coles, Danilo Dzwanki, Ivy Glenworth, Logan McCaughey, Susan Jordy, and all who are known to you. We pray for those who have died, remembering Malcolm Evans. We pray for his family, his wife, Buna. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor. For the sake of justice and truth, the Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Oh, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 191, dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace it out. <laughs> peace it out. Peace, peace it out. You may be seated while the altar is prepared. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, in this Eucharist, we renew our baptismal covenant. Help us through our offering this day to renounce all things that draw us from your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Eucharistic prayer is prayer two on page 196. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church gathered to one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Our sentence for the fraction is sentence number four. I am the bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. I am the vine. You are the branches. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray, gracious God, in this sacrament, we have shared the body and blood of Christ. May we who have been nourished by holy things bear witness to his light and share in his eternal priesthood, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. We conclude with the prayer at the bottom of page 214. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, here and in paradise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated for a few announcements, please. I know you thought this day would never come, and you probably hoped it wouldn't. But sadly, I have to tell you today, there's only one calendar left for sale. This is your last chance. My lovely assistant, Susan, is showcasing it for you at the back of the church. If you haven't already got your church calendar, this could be it for you. This is your last chance to get a lovely church calendar. Yours for only $7.50. Every time you turn that page to a new month, you'll think, oh, I'm so glad I got that calendar before they ran out. So, if you haven't got your calendar, today's the day. I'll say more. Other than to say, very attractive photographs inside. Very picturesque. So, you know who you are. <laughs> Don't be like Mark, who last year had to steal my calendar because he failed to purchase on time. That's me no calendar. We <laughs> never going to live that down. That's right. When we preach, we like to use actual living examples, Mark. So, there you go. Uh, also a reminder that if you can believe it, two weeks today is the first Sunday in Advent. Shockingly, we'll be that close to Christmas. So if you would like to offer uh, Christmas flowers, uh, a mass on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day as a bank offering or memorial, please speak to Chris Cox, who will happily unburn you of your donation. And if you wish particularly to have your uh, thank offering or memorial mentioned in the Christmas Bulletin, make sure you print it out neatly on a piece of paper so that we can include it when the uh, Christmas Bulletins are prepared. Also, as we begin to sort of come back together to a full life in the church. Uh, as some of you will recall, we sort of had to stop midway in our Bible study, which still remains unfinished. I can't remember if it was an Advent Bible study or a Lenten Bible study, but whichever one it was, we never got to complete it. So not today, but if you want to think about whether or not you would feel comfortable coming back to a Bible study, it was on, if it's during the day, it was usually about 11 a.m. or so, but 12.30 or something, so think about it if you're interested, let me know, and uh, we can think about the dynamics of how we um, accomplish that and bring it back together. Now, Peter uh, was with us to share uh, his message about faith works, but he was also with us to bring us a special presentation, and so I want to invite Peter up to make that presentation, and as you come up, I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciated what you had to say today, because the most important part of your message for me was that one word. There's, you know, there's giving food, there's giving clothing, there's giving shelter, but that word befriending is such an important word. And as Peter said, giving is simple, but the work that faith works volunteers do is really befriending. And if there's anything we've learned over these past few months, it's how difficult it is to be alone when you're in a difficult situation. So. We do the easy stuff, we just make the donation, but our donation supports volunteers who go out there and do the alongside and do the befriending 
are the presence of Christ in those communities. So I, I really appreciate what you had to say, and now give us the black. <laughs> As I mentioned in my message earlier, uh, FaithWorks is celebrating 25th anniversary. I guess I can drop this? Yes, you can. I'm over here. Um, <clears throat> this year. And in such, we wanted to recognize parishes who have been exceptional in their contributions over those 25 years. And so this recognition is for the, in this deanery of Tecumseh, the greatest donation in comparison to the offertory of a parish. And so, over 25 years, it's a wonderful accomplishment. And I know there are ups and downs in parish life, certainly over a 25 year period, but it's important to be recognized and also to be reminded sometimes as well too of what we are capable of and what maybe the future has in store for us as well too. So um, I will then put this back on again. So excited. I feel like I'm getting an Academy Award here. So Something like that. <laughs> Very good. Um, do you want to stand in the front here? Well, maybe? Maybe sure. Seem easier, or and off you this to be probably displayed here in the parish. Thank you so, so much. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Well, well, well. We're gonna have to find a place to hang this. Um, but I also want to uh, acknowledge that when, when I was advised that we were getting this, I was quite surprised because in my time here in the parish, I, I haven't known us to be participating strongly in this. So I want to um, acknowledge and recognize the work of incumbents who've gone uh, before me, uh, the Reverend Barb Cannon, Barb Hammond, and John Lockyer, both of whom um, supported this program and are really responsible for you receiving this award. So uh, I, um, when I heard we were getting this, I sent off a note particularly to Barbara because she was really strong in Faith Works program and thanking her for the work she did and letting her know that we were going to be remembered in this way. So thanks for coming all this way in the first snowfall of the year to bring it to us. It's very exciting. Are there other announcements not contained in the bulletin which need to be made? Any announcements? Going once? Twice? Soul. Soul. Like that calendar will be by the time I walk to the back of the church, I'm more than certain. Have a safe and blessed week. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.